بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين ما بعد إن شاء الله our discussion today it's not going to go in too much technicalities however we want to address the topic in a way that we can understand the need as well as the scope of what we are expected to do in this entire topic at hand this comes under islamic finance but the topic that i have been given is why we need halal mortgages and investment basically the topic entails what is the need for having an entire market for it why do we need to approach it isn't our life here being run for the last 30 40 years without it people are living people are dying our life starts and ends so do we really need it and that's what we are going to discuss inshallah as i said it's not going to go into too much of technicalities uh, rather what i am going to try to highlight is an angle in the islamic finance islamic economics as well as the marketplace that we are in um what are the changes that are happening that we need to that we need to understand our purpose our duty and our aim when it comes to owning a house going for some mortgage going some uh, some kind of an investment what is being expected from us in order for us to realize what we first need is what are the reasons we will assess whether this kind of a market is suitable for us or not the first criteria as it should be that we need to understand what is the sharia dictation in regards to this issue an interest free market is a divine divine instruction from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will talk about it we will understand from the shar'i perspective why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dictates it and why must that affect us why should we worry worried about it if you can recall my past discussions within the ambits of islamic commerce islamic finance over here i always mention and highlight because it gets overlooked so much islamic finance is a subset islamic commerce is the main branch on in deen when we open the books whether it's going to be in the matters of bukhari muslim or the fiqh books if you're going to open any of the fiqh books and everything you will not find a chapter of islamic finance it's not there but the chapter that is available over there is kitab al buyu and under that you will have many different abwab many different chapters chapter with regards to collateral chapter with regards to uh, uh, transaction bay itself chapter with regards to annulment of bay iqala chapter with regards to that and that and all that so when it comes to our sharia our sharia manages all these uh, islamic commerce aspects so in future if you have free time if you want to spend extra time on the side to understand about deen instead of first focusing primarily on islamic finance learn the concepts of islamic commerce learn learn what the broader principles are there which dictate islamic finance because islamic finance is only going to be a vehicle that is going to be run according to the laws of the islamic commerce and if you don't understand them properly you will always be asking questions which would have been answered otherwise if you understood the islamic commerce aspect when 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 a transaction is done between ahmed and bakr what are the requirements from them in, uh, to do in between each other what is the what is the requirement if they do the transaction in cash what is the requirement if they do the transaction in credit what about the 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 summon the price what about the mabi the commodity what are they supposed to do with this 
What if the commodity has some kind of a fault in it? What rules are dictated? So all those things should be understood. Then in a subsection of trying to secure some finances to buy a commodity. That's what our field is, Islamic finance. Your mortgage is going to revolve around that. And then if you want to find out about investments into, the, into different areas, how those is investments will be understood, you will have to assess it from the same, same transactions as well. Second thing that we want to discuss today or we want to basically very minutely highlight is what are the market trends, for, especially for us in Canada. There are certain market trends that are developing that were not there in the last 15 years, 15 or 20 years. They are changing a bit. And that is changing whether we like it or not, whether we want to address it or not. It is slowly but surely changing the mindset of the people. Many of you may be here, even uh, may have moved to Canada much later on. But I'm recording on my own, so I'll share that later on. I'm recording on my own, I will share that later on. Okay. Yeah. I didn't write it. Yeah. Okay. For those who are watching this on Zoom, I, I will be presenting the recording later on. So you don't need to record it right now. <clears throat> right. So market trends are important because many a times you may see a particular transaction within religion to be impermissible or to be discouraged or to be in, in the, within the ambits of something something we don't want to go towards but uh, when the market changes and uh, some um, uh, some uh, uh, waves of of a new development come into the market it may dictate that you can actually utilize those areas so those market trends are important. And last, we are going to tackle some other factors which, which are uh, affecting this entire market itself, but not directly, rather indirectly. And those should be reflected in our dis discussion, whether we need to put all, uh, all our energies toward establishing an Islamic finance market or any market that has these kind of Islamic ethos within it. So uh, while tackling that, let's continue. The first thing we are going to tackle from the side of the Sharia. The basis, basis in Sharia with regards to any kind of transaction, any kind of dealing and everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has categorically mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made bay' halal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made riba haram. Simple. It's a very straightforward statement comes uh, comes, uh, uh, comes in the Quran. However, if you start to read the ayah that is it is mentioning, you would recognize that this is actually a argumentation that is happening in between the the mushrikeen and the uh, uh, the mu'minin. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes the riba interest haram, and they come and say like, no, 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 but. Uh, you have to realize everything has a value. You know, if, if uh, you are going to come and meet me and talk to me, my time is valuable, right? So time has a money attached to it. Time has a value attached to it. Ask the, uh, the economist and he'll tell you, oh, one of the first concepts that you learn in your uh, economics and, or, or finance is time value of money, right? The time has money attached to it. If you have $100 today, that $100 today is worth more than the $100 that's going to be after 100 years because there's going to be devaluation. That $100 is not going to be of the same. Why? Because the time has stretched. You could have used this $100 to, to make more. Right? So the time has well, uh, money attached to it. And the argument says that since the time has, uh, has a monetary value attached to it, if I am going to borrow a loan from you, which I'm going to pay you back after uh, over 25 years, shouldn't I get anything extra more, more than that, uh, uh, the, the, the base amount of loan that I'm getting from you? There's a time of 25 years you're taking. Right? You'll be surprised. We are very, very, very staunch when it comes to uh, riba or, uh, or um, interest and we tell somebody like, oh, okay, can we do a transaction like this? I give you this $100 uh, uh, as a loan and you give it to me next month, but you give me a, a $10 extra interest. If I tell him that, 
give me ten dollar extra interest right away he's going to say like nah, riba is haram right riba is haram i will not take it then i sit down with the same broker and deal with him on a mortgage of 25 years and i'm willing to pay a good 50 to 100 thousand dollars worth of interest just so that i can secure the loan for a longer period of time we'll discuss about that as well uh, whether whether actually this conventional mortgage is an interest is it really an interest or not right we'll talk about that too so you realize our perceptions are according to what we understand the first thing is we we need to learn the the basics of it so that we can figure out whether something is an interest or not interest here the the, the mushrikeen they were arguing no no there is time value of money time has a value attached to it so what's wrong if somebody is asking you additional money for that time and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response is this wa ahallallahu albay' wa harrama arriba you want to know there can be different di- uh, uh, different you know uh, uh, explanations and reasons that allah could have given but no allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said no no this is not a matter of you to get involved in a an emotional or an argumentative uh, aspect this is a matter where allah is divinely letting you know that the bay the transaction it is halal and riba even though you may argue it looks like inter- a transaction still haram right just preceding this the, their argument had mentioned the statement in the malba misla riba right bay and riba it's the same thing you i buy this mouse from you for 100 dollars and then i sell it for 110 dollars i made 10 dollars profit okay i take 100 dollars from you to buy the mouse and i give you back 110 dollars right it's the same thing you do still doing transaction no allah subhanahu wa taala said when you make the transaction it is halal when you make when you stipulate riba then it is haram sayyidina bilal radhiyallahu taala anhu comes to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and presents to him some nice khujur right Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked Ya Bilal where did you get these these, these so nice dates from right because Sayyidina Bilal radhiyallahu is not known to be affluent where 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 are you getting all these kind of nice dates Ya Rasulullah I had two saw two saw saw is like a kg you can think right two saw of old dried dates yeah two kgs of old dried dates so i went to this merchant who uh, uh, the dates merchant i gave it to him and in in place of that two in, uh, kg of uh, in, uh, dry dates he gave me 1 kg of nice rotob fresh dates so i brought brought them for you ya bilal that is riba right you are exchanging 2 kg in lieu of 1 kg right they didn't make an argumentation yeah but the fresh ones have more taste in it right it has more value attached to it right no none of those argumentations ya bilal this is riba right so sayyidina bilal radhiyallahu anhu obviously feels bad but nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him the solution solution o oh bilal instead what you could do is that sell your 2 kgs worth of dates and whatever money you get you buy the fresh dates and bring it or or some shurra have understood the same the same narration in saying that give the 2 kg of dates right to the to the same merchant take the money from him now purchase the 1 kg dates two different ways but the maqsad is the same nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam separated one transaction into two transactions what did that do built in risk right after the one transaction the merchant said i'm not going to sell you a 1 kg of dates for this kind of money uh, give me more money the risk has come in right so nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam provided the solution as well my point here is allah subhanahu wa taala saying wa ahallallahu albay' wa harrama arriba when we have these kind of transactions understand the mechanism of the transaction and you will recognize that allah subhanahu wa taala is dictating to you how the transactions have to be done 
Another subtle point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established from this riba is this that when you talk about what Islam wants, you are not going to use your intellect. This is a divine religion. This is a religion that has, has the element of wahi within it. And the wahi comes whether you understand it or not understand it. Right. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab he is known to make a statement with regards to riba that the matters of the riba did not get completely understood until the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi had passed away. I only wish that the, the matters had been clarified. Some said that those, those, are, uh, those were specific matters of riba and some, some others mentioned other things. But uh, majority of the shura, they say, they simply say that those matters of riba which are very intricate, where even Sayyidina Umar عنه, wanted to get clarification from Rasulullah could not. So in, in the end, they had to resort to ijtihad on those issues. But doesn't mean that, that the original concept has not been revealed. In fact, we are going to talk about it. right? The, uh, what, the definition of interest. Inshallah, we will talk about that right? in the next slide. What we understand here is, this is a decree. This is divine. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have ifs and buts in, in this. Right? As long as our concepts are understood from the uh, from Quran and Sunnah, then khalas, the riba is riba. We are not going to change that into a profit. I, I, I remember uh, we were in uh, South Africa. We were sitting in, in the, in the co uh, boardroom of uh, um, uh, First National Bank, FNB. Right? They used to have an uh, uh, Islamic, uh, Islamic um, uh, banking section in the First National Bank. And we were discussing about this and, and uh, the representative from the bank, after being, have, having explained what the Islamic finance or how the particular contract has to be set, they said like, oh, so you, you want us to change uh, wherever it says interest, you want us to change it into profit. And every student of the Darul Iftah that was sitting there went like this, right? Because it was, it was such a simple aspect that no, we don't regard every, uh, regard every interest to be just simply profit. That doesn't make it halal. The concepts have to be right. Yeah, the, the, the transaction has to be right. If something is interest, then it will be regarded as interest, even if you call it a profit. Similarly, sometimes, and we understand it after coming into the market and everything, sometimes, some places, they will use the term interest, but it is not interest. I'll give you an example. For example, you go out to lease a car, right? You have leasing and financing. Leasing is basically hiring a car. In the lease, they, they will mention, oh, it is 4.9% or 1.2% or whatever percentage, right? The first thing that uh, the questioner asks us is, uh, Sheikh, it says uh, uh, there is riba in this in percentage, right? So we ask them, like, what is that percentage for? What is it? Right? We don't know because they don't understand the whole transaction. I say like it's a, it's a rental, where are they going to charge you percentage on it? You're not even buying the car. You're, you're actually renting it out. Percentage is for them to figure out how much they have to rent, uh, uh, charge you for the rental. So in the leasing, this percentage, although they are calling it as an interest, it's not really interest according to Sharia. Right? Right, details we can keep on ask, uh, ask, ask later on. But uh, we have, uh, mashallah, a very nice fatwa, Mufti Ahmad Sahib uh, wrote it out, explaining how the rental and the lease works with, with regards to the cars and everything. Where do the, those percentage comes from? <coughs> Next thing we understand over here is the current banking system that we have in the world, um, it is all interest-backed. Interest they want to work in a way to make money from money. Right? It's a fiat currency. Right, fiat currency meaning it doesn't have any value uh, uh, under it. If I take out a ten dollar bill, what does the ten dollar bill uh, uh, value of that one bill? Right, it's the paper that is printed on. Nothing else. Up until in the eighties, it used to be that there was gold reserved to be backed by it, but not anymore. It's no longer there. It's just a paper. So it's just because the government is telling you this is ten dollars. It's a ten dollar. 
right now they say like no no we do a complex uh, uh, mechanism of understanding the gdp uh, the the uh, the growth of the, the the country how it is been doing in the international market and accordingly but in reality you know what doesn't matter how good your gdp or anything is if uh, if you are within the uh, within the uh, circle of dollars you look at the american dollar right the american dollar tells from the behind now you're weak now you're you're, you're hoping that that breaks right we are hoping that breaks and then then you will find other currencies coming up there are there is there are a lot of motions coming on to bring bring back the gold uh, uh, back or the asset backed uh, currencies and everything hopefully allah taala accepts it inshallah right so first thing we understand is in sharia there is impermissibility of interest no matter what we don't, we are not going to ask questions about it what is this interest nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned in one narration the narration is weak but the meaning is absolutely correct corroborated by imam bukhari rahmullah as well kullu qardin jarra naf'an fa huwa riba every qard every loan right that brings forth naf a benefit any kind of benefit that benefit is going to be riba this is the base understanding of what interest is normally when we mention interest in english we say money in lieu of nothing right that's one way of uh, looking at it but from the hadith perspective or the or the perspective of the the actual uh, text from from the from the hadith we find that these wordings or similar wordings come in some of the sunan abi daud and some uh, some of those ibn majah's uh, books kullu qardin jarra naf'an fa huwa riba any any kind of a loan that yields any kind of benefit that benefit is going to be riba now this kind of a riba in the from the time of the jahiliya when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes and imposes a restriction upon it comes in different different forms and we don't have that much time to go deep into it mufti taqi usmani sahab had written an um, a, a historical judgment is his entire judgment came out as in a book form almost about like uh, 200 and 250 pages only explaining all the different types of the riba and the, their ahkam their rules about it but i gave you some examples just so that you understand it example i tell asif i shall lend you 100 dollar on condition that this 100 dollar shall remain a liability meaning it's a capital he is going to give me back my 100 dollars okay but while this 100 dollars or x amount of dollars or x percentage he has to give me more every month every year every every time in, in difference so we are going to say that this is going to be riba this transaction is going to be interest based transaction now this is this is mentioned in tafsir razi right he mentioned the exact juzia over there that in the jahiliya they used to enact loans like this where a person would enact a loan on a capital and then he would charge interest on it for the particular time period right why why do i give this example because there is there are some people make make a question and say no 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 the interest that was uh, used in the jahiliya they didn't uh, stipulate any kind of a uh, clause of interest in it it was just that you would give the qard and the person didn't give that back the qard after a year the person goes and imposes a, 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 an additional money on it okay now you are going to give me 110 dollars right so this is a clear example that no 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 in the time uh, in the pre islamic era the uh, transactions they were doing they had these kind of clauses another example comes in, along the same line is i sell you this commodity now one is to give loan to give loan in loan you are giving the money itself Hundred dollars, right? But what if Asif comes to me and he says, "Like, Mashallah, Musab, your your mouse is so Mubarak, right? You 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 must have uh, you must have perused over so many Mubarak websites with it. Okay, I want to buy this out from you. How much? And I tell him hundred dollars. Okay, I will sell you this mouse for hundred dollar, provided that you shall pay at a future date specified amount of money. But if you delay from that payment you will have to pay percentage extra or some particular amount extra right 
very very specifically i'm also adding in a specific amount or specific percentage because you, you know we we deal with a lot of questions sometimes people say like oh what if i have, i don't ask him for a percentage i ask him for a, a two dollars extra it doesn't matter whether it's two dollars extra or whether it's two percent extra right it is going to be riba in this particular case what happened there is no loan i sold an item so understand the concept of the deen as i said we have to understand the concepts right understand the concept of the deen when i sell an item and a commodity goes out of my possession into somebody else's possession and he owes me money this owing is a liability right it is not termed as fard rather deen so these two terms are very very similar fard or deen right i have a qard on him i have to give him this money back to him i have a dain on him i bought something from him or there was a transaction for which now i have a liability towards him for this much amount of money right so in this essence even on this kind of a sale which which brings about a dain there is still interest in there as well don't let anybody tell you like no 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 in jahiliya they didn't have that kind of transactions right it only happened with the actual qarz and not with regards to the 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 monetary uh, uh, transaction with commodities and everything no this is mentioned in tafsir tabari as well similarly in tafsir tabari they also mention like you know sometimes they say uh, uh, one question they may come and say oh but this is you know when you are taking advantage of a of a particular person right what what if we talking about uh, two giants and apple is dealing with uh, uh, tesla right they both giants in themselves so if one is targeting and charging the other person an interest amount that's like a commercial loan and a commercial loans are not applied in the same way right no so the um, tafsir tabari details out some incidents of the jahiliya where the merchants right the merchants of caravans and everything they would engage with the another uh, big entity and they would delay it further with the percentage amount as as a interest over it and uh, imam tabari mentions within it that these delays are in, uh, in lieu of the riba that they are going to collect right so these things are very very well defined in our books in in the hadith in the quran tafsir and everything there is no way out of it we uh, what, what you have to go out with is every qard or dain that you are going to go with if there is a benefit attached to it then that benefit is going to be riba now this cause uh, this should cause a little bit of a stir in your head because we, um, every time molvi sahab is also saying like if somebody gives you a loan always give him better right or nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam owed somebody um uh, uh, this some amount of money in lieu of the collateral of his uh, his zira right his armor when the person came to ask nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam about it so he raised his voice to nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sahaba were about to jump him it was a jewish fellow right nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said like no he has a right he has a right and he's asking for it so nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam told his sahaba instead who is going to cover up that amount and pay him out some sahaba said we'll do it right we'll pay, we'll pay him the amount right but, but uh, we won't let him come to you and uh, make a scene in front of you nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said okay very well then increase in the amount and give it to him right so that there is husn al qada there is the 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 the, the rep, rep, uh, response that you are giving to him is better than what he had give, has given now isn't that riba then right we we encourage everyone bhai if you take 100 dollar for so and so when it comes to return that 100 dollar give him 5 dollar extra give him 10 dollar extra understand the concept right kullu qardin jarra naf'an fa huwa riba this basic is when the clause of interest is written down and in, enforced in the actual contract otherwise if you are merely dealing and you say i am giving you 100 dollars how much do i expect from you tomorrow 100 dollars khalas what is my expectation 100 dollars tomorrow he comes with 110 dollars 
इसलिए भाई यू यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग हंड्रेड डॉलर इज यू हंड्रेड डॉलर बट टेन डॉलर इज हदिया फ्रॉम यू राइट आई डेंट हैव एनी एक्सपेक्टेशन दैट लैक ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेशन मीन्स दैट दैट एडिशनल इज मुबारक इट्स एक्सेप्टेबल राइट but if there is a mutual expectation from each side ah mufti sahab always gives back more so i can give him like 100000 this time right people keep on coming giving me 100 dollar 100 dollar and i keep on giving 110 dollars right then one day when i ask 100000 dollars <laughs> somebody comes and give 100000 expecting 110000 dollars are about to come back and they don't come back right nobody has any claim that lack of claim means that additional 10 was actually just additional not part of our qarz concept is understood this is a very very important and basic concept if we understand this when you talk about big contracts like mortgages and everything the same things will apply believe me the same thing will apply and i have i have i can tell you for certainty that um, in the last 3 4 uh, uh, months A, a contract was given to me approved by some sheikh right some sheikh within alberta and it was a loan contract with additional benefit in return i sat the person down i told him like are you sure you got this approved by so by the by the sheikh so and so so like yes so i said like you know this this clause that the the qarz that you are giving and later on some benefits are going to come your way that is exact riba that is riba so he said like so this is an interest based contract i said like yes so uh, so he said like what should i do i said like uh, finish it off right now whatever benefits you may have gotten spend them out without any rewards give them out to some some welfare or something like that without any rewards for it they don't belong to you to you right so he had to basically go and work back his contract this is not not like a old eh, i'm talk, talking about like 2 3 months back so these things happen because our base concepts are not clear and i told him like most probably the sheikh when he was reading it he only read the first line where you said that you, you are only liable to return the 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 capital and he must say like oh that's what that's what qarz is you return back the capital what he didn't realize was that the benefits were not in monetary terms rather in other benefits right so i explained to him we don't have badzan for or don't have bad doubt about that sheikh he may have made a mistake but rectify your contract okay so these are the, this is what we understand the riba to be conventional mortgages conventional mortgages when we have everywhere I I kept up there. If you can read it, it's a it's a quote from from Introduction to Finance. If, if you pick up any basically any hundred level uh, um, finance book, they will give you the base definitions. This is one of those definitions. A mortgage is a loan backed by real property. A mortgage is a loan backed by real property in the form of buildings and houses. In the event the debt is not repaid, important point: debt. Right? There is a debt. There is a qard. Debt is not repaid. The lender can use proceeds from the sale of the property to extinguish any remaining loan interest. Right? This is the base definition of a mortgage. Okay. so if you understand this base definition the two three points that you under, understand from it is mortgage is a loan right the bank is not helping you buy the house no no bank is lending you the money to buy the house okay second thing is the interest is part of the loan agreement it is built into it the bank wants you to pay more than what it's lending to you so that's interest over there and third is what happens to your house deeds you take the house deeds and you give it to the bank as a collateral they keep that collateral what do we call it in our market lien i have a lien on my house what does that mean somebody has a stake in it the bank has a stake in the house that if you do not pay back the loan that you owe to the bank the bank will take your house deeds go into the uh, uh, start the proceeding of foreclosure to to take forcefully take the ownership upon it which means it didn't have the ownership until now right forcefully take the ownership and sell it in an open market so you can cover the capitals 
this is exactly what the riba or interest based transaction is so whether we like it or not mortgage is an absolute interest based transaction in the conventional sense right which is why one of the very main question that is always asked is why do you call it halal mortgage but mortgage by itself is supposed to be a loan and an interest why do you call it halal mortgage so those are the matters of the 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 orf how it changes in the market people people say things right for example you will say your brother in law is your brother <laughs> but but the treatment of the brother is not there <laughs> right so sometimes you say it because it's the culturally acceptable or the market accepts it that that, that way mortgage is an interest based who owns the house house the person who bought it with his loan money he he owns the house bank doesn't bank has to procure its ownership in order to sell it out okay now keep these things in mind i'm i i'm highlighting or i am repeating them two to three three times why because when we talk about halal mortgage or we talk talk about any kind of islamic finance all of these things are going to be different it's not going to be a loan right either it's go, go, going to be an uh, a, a, a transaction based on purchase and then a profit attached to it separation of transaction in between murabaha right or it's going to be a, a partnership where uh, with uh, the bank or the uh, creditor it becomes a partner in the commodity with the buyer they are both sharik they are both partners right or it's going to be in the in a very um, uh, not, not so famous one ijara way of leasing it and then in the end converting that lease into a sale right as i said we are not going to go technical into the actual uh, uh, models and everything we will discuss the, uh, about them over the over the winter inshallah right if if your interest is still built up and you still keep on coming to listen to me and not sleep then we will talk about that in detail inshallah this okay right so what we understand from that is conventional mortgage is interest right now you have to understand that there is a separate discussion we can have on the side yes we understand that the conventional mortgage is an interest but isn't it that we can still purchase one house because it's a need right so we can discuss about that a little bit later on just keep that thought running in the mind question comes when we are exploring about the this market and everything while while we are exploring this we need to look for solutions so what are the solutions is buying the house the only solution here right and that's very important at least for the us fuqaha jurists it's very very important for us because we are now we have already mentioned conventional mortgage is haram because of the interest involved in it so is there any scope of permitting it for an, uh, for the layman right for that we need to know how much is the need how much is the necessity involved and all, what all those things are there right so why is there a need to buy into mortgage then when we talk about that few of the solutions are simple number 1 don't buy rent right renting has been there since the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and before and it has been there for the last 1400 years and it's not going away as well okay we'll discuss some some numbers about the market trends about those issues as well right renting is a is a considerable solid grounding of having shelter over your head so it's a viable solution to avoid interest based mortgage however the market trends are now showing higher rental costs anyone who's gone to toronto knows about it anyone who's gone to vancouver they know definitely know about it rents are becoming like a leviathan leviathan is a big monster right they they are they are becoming so um untamed that many people they are falling short in paying out their rentals they have to take out loans to pay the rents right so rent can become a very very big problem rent is generally a solution and it has been the solution for the for, for the um, um, middle to lower class people they don't have any other solution except for this second solution is let's just regard owning a house as a need 
let's just regard owning a house to be a need and you can just buy one house because the need is fulfilled right this is the fatwa that some of the mashayikh have been given sheikh yusuf al qardawi uh, uh, has been known for this fatwa there, there are a few handful of other mashayikh who have had this 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 fatwa as well however my naqis rai is that while they were uh, looking at these um, issues what they did not realize is the matters differ according to the markets right so if somebody was bringing it to me as 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 a basis for maybe toronto where overnight the uh, rental cost had gone out maybe uh, 10 times or 15 uh, 15 times right i may be willing to listen to the guy what your plea is what is your need but if somebody is going to come and say like no generally everyone it's a need for them to get a one house at least right and then they they give a qiyas analogy you know oh didn't didn't you buy the car and then uh, took out an insurance on that as well because there was a need for it it was imposed on you and you had to get it right you can choose not to buy a car right so similarly buy the house okay now that fatwa being there it's a fringe fatwa right fringe fatwa means very very few scholars have given it it doesn't have a general acceptance and there are reasons for that is it a need to own a house it ties in with our first point of rental we will talk about why the market trend shows that that is not the case not everybody is owning a house and there uh, there are a lot of people who are still renting third alternative is always there search for a halal alternative of halal mortgage and by the way those mashayikh who give permission of engaging into a haram conventional mortgage for first buy they have the this condition in there as long as there are no halal alternatives available when you have halal alternate available then there is no need for you to go to the conventional mortgage even if it is it becomes a little bit uh, more expensive for you right just because in the market the halal chicken is 2 to 3 dollars expensive or th- uh, even 5 dollar expensive does not give you the right to pick up just a safeway chicken and say like oh bismillah and eat right no it doesn't give you that right there is a halal me- meat present what is there for you to go for for mashkook or doubt for or, uh, other kind of meat right so you pick up the halal one same thing here if there are halal alternatives available if there are halal products available now you lose the chance of opting on to the onto that fatwa anyway so that's that's a solution no solution right okay so what we need to then look at the market trends what's happening in our markets what do we find in our market market trends is there is a something uh, you can make a ratio of, of between home owners and the renters right those who own the home and those who rent early 2000s saw an increase in home ownership however in the last decade last 10 years the trend has reversed right the statistics are still showing 34% 34% renters in the market meaning 34% of the people they rent regardless of their jobs regardless of what they are earning everything they are 34% are still renting this indicates that even in such economy renting is still an alternative yes you might have to because of the difficulty might have to go on to welfare or you might have to go on to this or that but the rental is uh, um, th- those uh, uh, avenues are going to be there you may go on to the government housing you may go on to lower income housing or things like that th- b- but still those uh, th- those things are going to be there if allah has not blessed you with that kind of a wealth you stay within your means it's a simple a uh, simple uh, aspect like that high home ownership should not mislead us to think that owning the home is the preferred choice right because 60 65% people are owning a house i have to own a house too right we don't work like that our deen does not work like that if if our deen had worked with these kind of a, um, a ratio that what majority does seems plausible then allah would not have revealed wa halallahu albay wa haram arriba majority were considering riba to be a transaction but allah dictated no it's not a transaction right majority of home owners they take out a conventional mortgage they don't own the house right in that 64% 
it it is a, a, a coincidental percentage by the way 64 to 65% of home owners out of those 64% to be precise, as per statistics, they bought the homes on mortgages, right? So majority of them are already, they don't own the house. It's actually, uh, the, the bank has given them the money to, uh, to, to take it out and they are also living in that mortgage. While the rest are living on mortgage free homes, some websites estimate that out of these 64 persons, 20% of these homes bought are subsequently put on rentals. So they are not being bought as a possession, as an ownership, rather they are being bought as an investment so that they can rent it out to the other renters who are going to utilize these houses, right? Which shows that the renting margin, the renting block is quite a big, a big chunk of the market itself, which is why I say rental has always been a suitable uh, uh, alternative to owning a house yes we understand owning a house is a preference like from your desire right you feel more comfortable and some market trends now indicate it may also lead you towards uh, some some kind of a uh, 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 requirement as well necessity as well what is that basically there is another ratio in the market price to rent ratio price to rent ratio what is this price to rent ratio basically price to rent ratio is normally a way to compare the cost of buying a house and compare it to the rent uh, renting one right should i buy the house or should i rent the one what's the what's the ratio in between it is calculated by dividing the price of a typical home by the annual rent of the similar house it helps you realize would it be more difficult financially difficult for me to buy the house or would it be financially difficult for me to rent it in the last 10 years data suggests that while renting was the trending option being less costly overall than owning a house right renting was less costly than owning a house however thank you covid since 2020 since 2020, the market has not recovered. Since 2020, the trend has reversed and worsening economy makes it more affordable to buy the house rather than to rent it. This is why the rentals have been going up. The cost of renting has, is going up. Whereas you, you think of it like, oh no man, I can't manage it. I might as well go towards a purchase, mortgage. I will, I will have a specific amount of rent that I'll have to th throw out every month. I know it's this much, but the rent is every year is going up 10%, 10%, 10%, everything, right? So this means that while our market would love to make use of this shift in the trend, the chance of engagement into interest-based mortgage market is very, very high. You'll, you'll have to go towards a mortgage to, to do that instead of renting. So you will be utilizing a lot of interest-based transaction in this. On the other hand, also look at the positive as well should there be a viable halal home financing market available this very desire for home ownership can become the foundation for the ummah's future why because if there is a viable halal alternative you can go instead of renting into buying the house and build a um, uh, the, um, is muslim based population having a lot of houses free of interest Right. That's, that's going to build a foundation for the future, which is why we, we need to know why, uh, whether this kind of a market is something we should go into or not. Right. I, uh, I understand up until now, even myself, every time I have mentioned, hey, if you have lump sum to buy out cash, then do it. Otherwise, tawakkal to Allah. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll die now or die then. But looking at these market trends if it is possible if you have a viable income your credit score is good and everything and you have halal uh, uh, halal um, uh, mortgages available or halal schemes available maybe utilize it because you will save on your on your rental expense on, on the uh, on the next 10 to 15 years at least until the trend changes again but inshallah by then you'll have a house you won't have to worry much right okay Last thing that we want to look at it in the market trends is income to rent ratio. 
this is especially when we go into the actual renters as i said rental is one of the base uh, uh, alternative for those who, who can't buy into the house they have to go into the rental so sometimes um, uh, some ratios are important for us to re realize whether whether a person need is actually factual or not right a person earns $3000 per month right some bichara like us $3000 a month and he has to pay $1400 into rent okay what how is he going to be surviving for the rest of the month if if the big chunk close to 50% of it is going into the rental right so this ratio is very very important normal general rule of having a very good ratio is 30% 30% of your income if it is going towards the rental then you are considered to be in the green zone right you don't have to worry much because you are in a, in a good environment good good uh, balance where you have sufficient finances aside from your income aside from your rental then uh, that uh, that uh, you can use for other expenses and everything but if this percentage starts to increase it shows that with the within the bracket uh, income bracket that you are in you are you are having a lot of difficulty undue difficulty we are living in alberta alhamdulillah right alberta has always cherished and enjoyed these ratios okay normally in the past 2 uh, 3 decades this percentage has always been 20 to 25% not even 30 right 20 to 25% however look at this trend coming from last in the last 10 years 2014 from 24.6 now it has gone all the way up to 25.8 so it's increasing right pretty soon is going to be at um 30 30% that's the minimum this chart over here that you see it shows how how expensive the rentals are throughout canada alhamdulillah alberta is still green green yellow right so the two greens are uh, edmonton and calgary okay Calgary is expensive, but still green. <laughs> but look, look, look at Vancouver and Toronto; they're burning, <laughs> right? And and we know anybody who knows who's living over there, they know, right? It, 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 you cannot live there on rental, right? You need to just get out and live in some some uh, uh, like suburb or some completely outside the uh, the, 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 the city and go back in there to work. the trend is showing that this is increasing which means that on an in, uh, this is average right on an independent level this will be affected by the kind of em uh, employment you have what if the person can can't even get like that uh, 5000 dollars uh, job that he, that he can pay for 1500 1600 and uh, uh, house right so depending on every individual these percentages may change when people come to us and ask us mufti sahab is there any gunjaish is there any scope that i can look at any of these areas i have to look at their financials i have to ask them about their needs i have to ask them about their whether they are being able to fulfill those basic basic needs if i find that someone is paying 50% of his income into uh, rental right the sharia will find some scope for him right al darura tu bi al mahdurat is an usul of sharia right when you have necessity coming up together then it will bring about that ease for you it will bring about that relief in a, in a manner such that you will not be taken to task for the sin there was a brother he um lived in um, hamilton he tried whatever he could to rent but unfortunately he, uh, his um, family had some allergy from carpets and things like that and he could not live there so most of the days his family was living in the uh, hospital because of the continuous allergies and uh, and the breathing problems and everything asked me what's the solution i said like remove the carpets he said like none of the landlords allow that i have i have actually gone to municipal level to push the landlord to remove the the carpets and everything but they don't allow it i said like then what what other option is there find find a, a place that that doesn't have carpets right 
he spent almost two months trying to find something where he could place his family without carpets and everything. Could not find it. Right? I said like, okay, try and find any location where uh, you, you can purchase the house with some halal mortgage over there. He's, he spent another month trying to look for it. Still couldn't. Nobody would take him on to buy, the, uh, buy uh, or provide him that halal mortgage. In the end, he said, like, uh, Mufti sahab, I'm feeling like I'm coming at my end. Either this or I need to just get up and go somewhere else. Right? So leave Canada and go somewhere else. Because I've tried three different cities and it's not working. Alhamdulillah, I get job. I have job. I don't have any problem with the job. But my living accommodations do not come through. Right? I made bashwara with my, my seniors and I spoke to them. And... In such a scenario, when you have a big family as well as these difficulties are coming in, the Sharia gives some scope. Okay, you find you find a way to uh, secure it, but uh, really uh, get out of that situation as soon as possible. As soon as possible, I say like, mashallah, you have a good job. You can you can bring in a lot of money. Then find some way of getting it where within. A couple of years or three years or four years, you you pay out everything. You keep on finding, trying to get loans to pay pay it out and everything, right? So Alhamdulillah, he's doing much better now. But my point is, we are willing to find those scopes for ease. However, it is a case to case basis. If you go out from here thinking, oh, Mufti Sahib said like, oh, there is there is scope, right? Then that is your nafs talking to you. You need to put that decision into somebody else's hand. And better yet, put it in, in the hand of some mufti who knows about the issue, who knows about the difficulties and let him make that decision. Don't let that decision heavy your shoulder. At least that mufti who is going to do his due diligence, he will be able to stand for you. And say, Ya Allah, yes, I applied my sincere ijtahad and this person's, his, his, uh, 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 his home condition warranted it, right? So we don't just willy-nilly give it out. It has to, it has to be, I have to be, uh, my, my heart has to be able to sustain it as well. But there is possibilities, right? Last thing I want to talk about today is, there are some factors there are some factors which are not directly connected to the our uh, Islamic finance market, but they are all uh, indirectly connected. And Alhamdulillah, I have been in, in connection with Bhai Abdul Alim and uh, some of it is his inputs as well. When we are looking at an Islamic finance market or when we are looking at uh, trying to establish this market for the future purposes, there are lots of things that are going to come up out because of it. Number one, primary thing is there are going to be lots of new jobs that are going to be made, right? And you tell me, you move to Canada and you want to settle over here and you find that there are jobs available in Islamic sector, which are paying jobs, good jobs. Why would you want to go towards anything else? As long as your your uh, 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 all your mechanisms are fulfilled, all your expenses are fulfilled through it and everything, you are going to try to maintain within your Islamic ethos, right? So uh, with this market coming in, there are lots of jobs that are going to come about: accounting jobs, finance jobs, investment jobs, mortgage broker jobs. Now again, I'm saying again, again, mortgage we are only using it in the the general sense these are not actual mortgages these are these are brokers for murabaha musharaka ijara one of those uh, uh, product schemes and everything for uh, obviously if you're going to become a broker of it you will learn what those things are as well similarly on a bigger scale the wealth is going to grow there's going to be growth in wealth you uh, our ummah our people muslim people community they are going to be acquiring actual assets within the country within the provinces and everything Right, so this asset acquisition, and that means there is tangible growth in their wealth over the time. There is opportunity to rent out and grow income, and I will just add a little bit more. Even when you are buying a house to rent it out, you can be a better landlord and rent it out for uh, a bit cheaper or a bit better uh, rates. To, to your fellow Muslim brothers, if, especially with the, when, the, when the homes are right next to massages and everything. 
to have more more people together right but don't discriminate because of that huh <laughs> sometimes sometimes non muslim and uh, uh, tenants are better right and, uh, once you go into experience then <laughs> you, you still have to look at the uh, what what the character rap sheet is and everything sometimes they they take care of the the property much better than what you might do so uh, uh, what i would say is you also take care of the property better then hope hope that you will be chosen to have those cheaper uh, uh, places inshallah there is an organic progress in an islamic sphere that will come about because of this new market increase activity brings learning opportunities more people more youngsters uh, or people who have different different backgrounds they would want to learn about these areas right okay i uh, in, instead of becoming an insurance broker i can become a takaful broker what is takaful right raise of hand how many people know what takaful is okay right so if now instead of insurance you were looking for takaful you would first find out oh what is takaful takaful is halal oh my god okay takaful insurance can be uh, bought into as well so new uh, you will better yourself in your uh, knowledge as well as better yourself in your fulfillment of your deeni obligations right knowing that you're doing it all within the ambits of halal community needs for scholarship will increase or not everybody is an expert in the field right and not anyone i i i i highlight this all the time not anyone who is a molana automatically becomes a phd right no it doesn't happen in the other uh, academic field it doesn't happen in islamic field as well right mashallah it is it is allah's ni'ma and allah's barakah the general uh, aima that we have um, uh, allah fills with uh, the, them with that much of uh, of knowledge right but generally experts are not just merely born like that they spend time into it right they spend a countless countless months trying to figure out dif different ways so uh, when you have an entire market gearing toward islamic finance you will find more and more experts are going to be found in this area we are living in edmonton i can tell you for the past 10 15 years it's like a it's like a uh, you know once in a blue moon kind of a thing i find somebody who knows about islamic finance right and worse off once in a blue moon i find somebody who knows about islamic finance and even rare is that their understanding of islamic finance is as good right it's nothing to do with me i'm only regurgitating what my what my teacher said right but generally basic concepts when you start to discuss you find out like oh okay okay the, this concept you have not grasped it let me sit with you and let me explain to you what the concept is right and you you find that there is lot of layers within islamic finance so mashallah in the uh, for the last 3 4 months um, now 7 months i believe right we've been having in um, the canadian islamic finance board a lot of ulama we sit there and i feel like you know uh, finally we found a place where their actual expertise is being discussed right so alhamdulillah a, a good gr groundwork has been ha happening over there we can we can talk about it separately as well now what will this do is establish a broader foundation infusing islamic ethos into corporate sector when you have halal ways of uh, running your your money in the market then obviously there the other businesses are going to be able to utilize it as well how many of the business entrepreneurs are going to sit and say like the only reason the only reason my uh, uh, work is not running better is because I, i can't find sufficient money in flow to put uh, inject into my uh, my work now with the islamic uh, uh, finance market over here you would be able to seek that kind of injections so that you can go in, into mudaraba you can go into those kind of uh, areas where you can actually flourish your business that that is uh, uh, being restricted so these are these are things that we don't normally see and this is also going to have ripple effect what ripple effect is going to you, you will automatically say if we have so much islamic money halal money moving abroad we need to have uh, uh, control over it we need islamic bank Very right cool. we have we need islamic banking when you adopt for it then you will you will realize the need for islamic banking is there because right now your money is going into a checking account that checking account your money goes into the same uh, uh, market of growing money from money money from money and you don't uh, uh, you cannot uh, uh, enjoy any of those proceeds 
in an islamic banking your your money goes into a partnership and it yields money it's an investment based checking accounts where you earn profits on it and those are halal so uh, uh, having this kind of market you will dip, uh, build the islamic banks a wide range of islamic products to fulfill different different needs how many how many of us have children who are waiting to go into the university and they, they don't have an, uh, student loans right so those uh, we can we can work around schemes and products that can help with those areas while rebuilding our communities banking on a partnership level a stronger robust handle on how the money is invested a bank is going to make sure that money is being spent in what, what avenues which markets it's going into not into some uh, something that's going to uh, uh, ripple out and go help uh, help into the killing of our own muslim brethren right rather uh, confined into the areas where it needs to go then such uh, such vibrancy within the market area the dawa and the public perception is going to come about as well right halal banking finance uh, financing has an attraction for non muslims too one one uh, um, one st uh, uh, statistics that uh, that was mentioned was uh, was in uk a ryan bank uh, 40% of the people uh, who who utilize it are non muslims right so non muslims recognize and realize that this this kind of a uh, halal way of investment also yields positive results so when we have that available they will they will utilize it it's going to be a way of introducing islamic ethics into the business sectors right i remember <clears throat> i was sitting in a boardroom with uh, my teacher mufti ibrahim desai sahab and we had this brother who came from bahrain and he was sitting with us and uh, he gave us a talk for about 15 to 20 minutes um about um uh, critical review of islamic banks and and their adherence to islamic ethos and so basically it was a this was a non muslim from california who was appointed to see the islamic banks in bahrain to check how many of them fulfill all the basic islamic ethos requirements a non muslim was doing it right so he was telling my my teacher he said you know normally when i go into different banks i tell them that as soon as i came in nobody greeted me with salam just because my skin is white doesn't mean i am not a muslim i may be a muslim right so my my teacher smiled he said like you know second thing i didn't find anyone with the sunna beard it's a non muslim saying i didn't find anyone in the in uh, in the bank with the sunna beard uh, on the front floor people can go to normal regular conventional bank you will find the same people there they come to islamic bank you will find the same people the product that you have to put out is the islamic ethics islamic ethos how is it that uh, that you have not mastered the idea that the product that you are delivering is more islamic teachings more islamic actions so you need to have some sheikh over there you need to have general people with beard and everything so that confidence get built right this is his critical analysis of how he enters into an islamic bank right i'll tell you in pakistan i felt the same thing by the way <laughs> when you go into an islamic bank right the, the name is there islamic but uh, but when you talk to people and everything then it becomes an, a, a different story it's it's another thing once they find out that i am a mufti then the chairs come out because it's an islamic bank if i do that in the non islamic bank then no chair comes out <laughs> so my my point is automatically this is natural that when you have this kind of an environment and everything the islamic ethos it flourishes it it uh, you're going to be having a lot of assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam jazakallahu khairan this kind of thing now automatically these these things are going to be imbibed into our uh, uh, actions last thing now financial opportunities for the muslim entrepreneurs are going to increase halal financing is always asset backed halal financing always have to have some kind of a partnership some kind of a commodity some kind of an asset in the back this provides unique opportunity for entrepreneurs to seek business ideas involving asset based resources like farms cattles 
real estate real estate still many people go how many people, people uh, uh, that we have today if the, if your child come and says like i want to run a farm are you going to say like uh, is that why we came to canada so you can go out and raise cattle but this this lot of money in it right this resources and wealth in it in fact i still remember the name of the, uh, the scheme was al mabrur we developed a, uh, an investment scheme in south africa uh, which basically um, uh, the uh, the farmer he would take the money and invest it into cattle and not only just any cattle a, a, a triple a grade uh, 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 big five uh, uh, like angus cattle or whatever brahman ca- cattle those cattle that one one animal could sell for 1.7 to 7 million 1.7 for a wheel for a small one 7 million rands about 6 uh, about a million dollars right a million dollar for one ca- uh, one cattle so anyone who has uh, invested in it they're going to reap the rewards out of it so the, uh, these things are available over here as well our our alberta angus meat is not uh, is not something cheap it's good right i'm not talking about the taste i'm talking about the money <laughs> but we don't want to go into it you, you have to realize a natural organic growth means that a, that our children our next generation they grow up to do the business that they want to do and they flourish in it not that they they have to pick doctor or or engineer just so that they they can get the big money coming in entrepreneurial areas have lot of money in it right so same things can happen over there having halal financing is such in such sectors provides the uh, provide growth for our communities to work in the field of choice rather than field of demand there is a lot of demand for halal food here lot of demand right uh, we are not fulfilling our needs by the way in in uh, in alberta in uh, in edmonton but we don't have farmers providing halal we don't have those suppliers we have to look for suppliers elsewhere where the suppliers are coming are coming from across the border where we cannot check whether they are halal or haram or is just a stamp on it right so if we have these the, the local people individuals utilizing these kind of entrepreneurial areas to build these farms and everything this market is going to grow our uh, umma our community is going to grow it's going to find its roots then perhaps we, they will also find that they need they will start working among the masses as a means of direct dawa as well this is our land we are not going anywhere so now let's make it islamic right we make dua to allah subhanahu wa taala that allah subhanahu wa taala gives us this what now what what will we do now so <clears throat> question is now what islamic finance is coming to the market whether you like it or not okay islamic finance is coming no matter what either jazakallah khair jazakallah either either you are going to benefit from it become a part of it grow with it or you're going to become a bystander and see how it it gets overrun we already realized i'm talking about the mashaikh we already realized if we are not going to um, tighten our belts to work in islamic finance the chances are those who do not have the same vision they are going to utilize it to fulfill their own maqasid which is to make money we every now and then we find uh, these islamic schemes and everything they are coming with a, a, a new halal financing model when we look into it it has nothing islamic in it right it is it, or it has glaring go, uh, uh, holes in it and when we approach them then Uh, you you don't hear from them in, at all right so we need to make the proactive approach learn you you will need to establish your footing in the community to buy houses and everything so right now enter into it by yourself start learning about it i know it's a little bit dry and a little bit difficult but start learning because it's going to be beneficial not only for yourself but your family next generation realize that ultimately it is us and uh, as an individual choice don't go out of this uh, hall thinking that oh this is like our umma is going to work towards it no independently everyone is going to be responsible for their own choice it could be that i i managed to um, uh, 
convince like 10 people that they're going to go for very very conservative very nice halal in finance and everything it's the others who are going to be making the decision individual decision that are going to make the market if the 90 percent of the market is still choosing the wrong methods the market will not go towards the right direction we want the market to develop in the right direction. We don't want we don't want the market to flow towards what is easy, right? We want to hold. We want to take the reins and we want to uh, serve the market towards what we want to be. Consult your scholar and seek expert advice. You are you are not an expert in the field. Do your due diligence. Learn as much as possible, but do not lose scope that there are scholars who are expert in the field. Go and sit with them. Ask them that this is the area I cannot understand. Please help me understand. So and so company or so and so organization is asking me this. Is that valid? Is that not valid? If it's not valid, can you ask them why they're doing this? Right? So ask and learn from it. Take yourself to task to make the best decision for yourself and your after. Lastly, our independent individual choice formulate a communal trend, a community that mandates that its future is nurtured under religious dictates will see the effects of it in other parts of their life as well. When you are making sure that the halal uh, income is being applied in halal avenue to get a halal house, then the chances are you're going to be worried about what other halal things are happening in the house. Right? You will start wondering about that. That I, I have made everything out of halal and then the activities that are happening in the, in the house are not halal. Right? So they all complement each other. That's how we build our ummah in a halal manner. The choices we make today to establish the system will nurture our children and their future as well. That's where I'm going to stop inshallah.